How's it Ganon lads? Marshall here and welcome to another review on the channel. As you can see today, we've got a player with a bad reputation. It is Diego Costa. Now, he's got a bad reputation, but at the same time, he's got a bad habit. Getting in forms on FIFA 17. This is now his third in form this year. And of course, he's got the player of the month. Now, his player of the month card is 89 rated. This one is 90. Will there be any difference whatsoever? Today we find that out, lads. New man, the matches came out last night. It included the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo, Paul Pogba, uh, who was the other one? Higuain, I think, was one of them. And Triorio was one. Let me know if you want any of those reviews on the channel sometime soon. If they're not stupid money, I will do them because, of course, leading up the team this season, I don't really want to waste coins. But if you do want those reviews, I'll get them out soon. Just let me know in the comment section below. And if you do enjoy this review, smash the hell out of that thumbs up button straight away. 1,000 likes is your target. And if you do want any cheap MSP, PSN, or even game codes, head on over to g 2 Use that code M89. Every single link that you will need is right there in the description below. So, the team around Diego Costa, we've got another inform in there that I did want to try. Well, two informs I wanted to try. Tostegan is one in net. I wanted to see if he was good as like Kilo Navas or goalkeepers like that. He's now 85 rated. I just wanted to see how effective he was in game. He's a great shot stopper, but apart from that, he doesn't really bring much to the table in. I wanted to try my new reds out. We have Alonso at left back and we have DeMarcos as the right back. DeMarcos is amazing. So good on this game. So fast. So strong when he needs to be strong. Marcus Alonso, you know what I think about him. The best left back in the Premier League. Sensational player. Then it's centre back. Mario Gaspar and Sergio Ramos. Them two together kind of did a formidable partnership. They were very, very good. Casemiro is our CDM. 85 rated. Isco's right centre mid. Why have I got them two? It's because of the links to the cam. James Rodriguez. Now, I haven't done a review on Rodriguez, but again, if you do want to see that, let me know in the comments section below. James, he was good, but he wasn't good at the same time. But in a review, I'll get more in depth into that. Kantia is the left centre mid, and Torres is the striker, bringing that kind of past and present Atletico Madrid kind of vibe to the strike force. So, let's get in the review. So here we go then, lads, and when we get into the price with Diego Costa, you'll find out that he is quite cheap for a 90-rated card. Now, at the time we're doing this review, I paid 254. I played 11 games, so I did get a very, very good feel for the card. And at the time of me selling, I sold him for 250 and he's dropping like a bloody stone on the Xbox and on the PlayStation. On the PlayStation, he's around the 230 mark. So like I said, I played 11 games with the card, scored 11 times and assisted 3 times. So 14 goal contributions over the 11 games. I was happy with that because there were some very challenging games. He's got 3 star skills, that is a slight downside with the card. But Diego Costa doesn't deserve 4 star. He's got a 4 star week for now, however, and high to medium work rates. Look at that aggression, 90 bloody 8, unbelievable, great composure as well, 84, 99 position, and 96 strength, his sprint speed has improved, now 82, as we get on the skill tributes, you'll notice his ball control, very high, 94, his dribbling, 91, and the finishing, 99, hidden accuracy, 99, so with the shot power of 94 as well, any type of goal Diego Costa can score in this game, He's got the technique to do it. He's got the right technique. He knows which foot to hit it with extensively. I'll get into this extensively. What the hell am I saying that for? I'll get into it extensively in this review. The types of shots that you can score with Diego Costa as he gets the ball on the edge of the area. Great fake inside. And it's a near post shot beating the goalkeeper to make it 1-0 in the game. That was late on as well. Diego Costa does very well in that situation, and that's what he can do as well. Sometimes he can drop the shoulder, jing inside. He's got great ball control. He's got great dribbling, like I did mention. But, and there's a big but. Well, there's two big buts. Agility, balance. Like I say many, many times, with a lot of players on this game, agility and balance, they go hand in hand. It allows you to be kind of nifty and kind of agile and kind of evasive. Diego Costa He's abrupt, he's abrasive, and yeah, he's just a direct footballer that just wants to get his head on the ball, wants to get his feet on the ball, and charges at players. He's not like a nimble Florian Tauban or a Lionel Messi. He's not like nimble like that. So with the agility, with the balance being on the very, very low side, he turns like a tank because he has a tank. He turns 
very, very slowly from time to time. Like I said earlier on, I jinged inside with the drop of the shoulder, but that's his great dribble coming out of play. It wasn't his agility, it wasn't his balance, and like I said, they are very, very bad with the card. So, when it comes to dribble, and just keep in mind, he will turn slowly, but he'll turn very powerfully. If there's someone on his shoulder, He's keeping a hold of them. He's keeping them off his kind of ball because it is his ball. When it's in control, it's Diego Costa's ball. He's got 90 bloody eight aggression. With that, you win 50-50 challenges. And with Diego Costa, he never loses any battle on the game. He's very, very aggressive in the challenge. Very aggressive off the ball. So he'll charge down the ball. He close down the ball a lot. On the instructions, that press the back line and get in behind. Press the back line. My good God, Diego Costa does that all the time. Look at him there, he's running in and out, and he does get the ball at the end of it and start the counter attack off, which at the end of it, he will score the goal. So, with Diego Costa, he's never kind of resting on his laurels. He's always going, he's always kind of nibbling at the heels of the opposition defenders. He just goes all game long, and he's a menace. That is exactly what he is. He's a bloody menace, and he's got the strength. He's got the strength to kind of back up this aggression. So, with the aggression, like I said, 50 50 challenge and all that kind of bollocks. He's got the strength to hold them off in the air and on the ground, in the air. My good God, is this guy strong. He wins every single header. Of course, he's like six foot plus, but he's great in the air. 99 head accuracy. If you want to be sweaty and you want to kind of cross it to Diego Costa, you'll win the header. Now with corners on this game, Diego Costa is at the front post. Now, I think it goes off head and accuracy. I think it goes off like the finishing. I think it goes off the heights and all that kind of took into account. But Diego Costa with his head and accuracy is at the near post. Now, if he gets his head on it, it's going on target. Now, the keeper can kind of either pull off a miraculous save or it's going in the back net. One of the other. He never misses the target. So, on those near post corners, you know exactly what to do. Whip it to the near post. Obviously, you want to do that every single time because his heading is immense. So he will win headers. He's tall. He wins goal kicks, corner kicks, crosses. Like I said, if you want to be sweaty and you want to cross it into him, play him in a one-striker formation. In terms of playing him in a two-striker formation, he's good. But sometimes he kind of gets swamped down by the other striker. The other striker for me was Fernando Torres. Torres was getting a lot of goals, so was Diego Costa, like I said, he got 11 and 11. If Torres wasn't there, and Diego Costa was a lone striker, Diego Costa would have ended up on a lot more goals, as Torres actually whips in the cross, and it is Diego Costa that scores the goal. Now, my celebration, you might be thinking, oh, wow, what a twat, running off shushing the opponent, but I'll tell you what happened in this game. He went up 1-0, he went up 1-0. He messaged me saying, buy a better team, give him more of your money. So what did I do? I smashed him. Three goals to one. And the last goal, of course, I went off shushing him with Diego Costa. And yeah, it was a very good moment. So on to the rest of the pros we go. Now with Diego Costa, like I said, he's great. And yeah, evidence in the background, scoring a header there from the corner. His holder play is generally bloody brilliant. Aggressive strength, height, heading, holder play. He's control is unbelievable. You pass into his feet, you pass into his chest, you pass it into his head, he'll control it like a seal. He'll bounce it off his head and he just it stays close to his body. Doesn't get too far away from him. And as we go on the next one, we got the position. 99% of the time, he's in the right place to get the ball. He's always making space. He's never kind of static. You always want your strikers to move. You never, ever want them static because when they're static, they're marked. You never, ever want that. So deal, Costa, like I said earlier on as well, He's always a menace, he's always going, he's always doing something. So in the game, you can guarantee his positioning will be brilliant. And normally, when you've got good positioning, you get in the right place, you will get chances. Can Diego Costa take his chances? Yes, he can. With a pinch of salt. Honestly, he's very, very good in front of goal. You've seen the strength coming into play there. Holding off the defender. I ran clean through. I could have kept running and running and running and scored at the end of it. But I just want to kind of test his strength out. I pushed the defender off the ball. Went through. Scored the goal. That is exactly the type of goal you can kind of expect with Diego Costa. He can score the finesses. He can score the power shots outside the boots in the air. I tried a few bicycle kicks. They weren't really kind of popping off. For Diego Costa, but you can imagine he will score them if you do get it right. So, with Diego Costa, his aggression sensational, his strength unbelievable, his sending great, his whole play, his height, and taking all the other things I've said into account. 
very, very good included. His great dribbling, his great ball control, his positioning, his finishing. This guy is a great, great striker. There is one question though. Is he better than his player of the month? Where should I invest my coins into a Diego Costa? Obviously, you can't get that Diego Costa anymore because that expired a long time ago. But with Diego Costa on this game, his inform, it's not much different. Not much different than the slightest. What I said in this review is basically repeating what I said in the player of the month. This player of the month is great as it is. This one isn't much of an improvement. Now, if he gets team the season, however, this card will be bloody sensational. So I just look forward to that if he does get a team this season. I know he's been scoring goals here and there for Chelsea all season. He's got a few informs. He's got a player of the month. He should get a team this season. So for that reason, this card will get the same rating as his player of the month. Because I don't think it's improved that much to kind of warrant a higher rating. So I hope you kind of get that across. He's going to get a 9.3 from me. And a value for coins because of what I just said as well. A 6.0. His player of the month is better or the same as this card. Well, it's not better. It's the exact same. Let's just say that. There isn't too much difference in the slightest. Is he foot champs ready? Yes, he is. He's a great player. He will score your goals. His other player is similar to Slatan. Apart from the four-star skills, he's a very, very good striker. As Ned would say, he could play center mid, cam, CDM, striker, center forward. I don't care. This guy is very versatile, to say the least. So, that's going to be it for this review, lads. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, once again, smash the hell out of that thumbs up button. Let me know in the comment section below as well about those man the match cards. And yeah, lads, smash that thumbs up. Subscribe if you are new around here. And as always, I will catch you all next time.